Hi and welcome back to Leader Logic. I'm Amelia and today we're talking about the hierarchy of control, sometimes called the hierarchy of risk control. And uh, this is another episode of uh, the series Leaders Love Triangles. And the reason I've picked this one is because you see it all the time um, in risk mitigation studies. Um, if you've ever been in a HAZOP, which is a hazard and operability study, um, you'll often hear people referencing the hierarchy of controls. Um, you also hear it in safety and design workshops, uh, constructability workshops. It's a theory that's pretty prevalent um, among all different types of risk mitigation activities that you might undertake during a normal design design project. So it's a triangle. In this case, in this case it's an inverted triangle. And what it does is it provides you with a, um, a hierarchical list of strategies that you can use to either eliminate preferably or mitigate risks. And the idea is, is that if you've designed something and there's a risk associated with it, um, you want to reduce the risk from the current risk to as low as reasonably um, practicable. And uh, when we use that term as low as reasonably practical or practicable or possible, um, what, what they're getting at is to manage a risk effectively. Sorry, I mentioned I live quite close to a busy road. We'll just wait for the ambulance to go by. What you're trying to do with any kind of risk mitigation activity is take the risk level from where it is now and then through a variety of design decisions or other um, strategies, reduce the risk down to a level that everyone is satisfied with and that um, a reasonable person would consider to have been managed effectively. Um, what you don't want to do is throw more money than you need to, to bring the risk all the way down to zero, because sometimes that's just not going to happen. Um, a perfect example is in the um, oil and gas industry, for example, or in the, in the offshore drilling industry, the risks there are always going to be higher than zero because you're out in the middle of the ocean, you're dealing with something that's dangerous or flammable. There's a lot of things about a system like that that the risks can't be entirely managed, but what you can do is take a lot of reasonable measures to bring the risk from here down to here. So the hierarchy steps through a number of mitigation measures. So um, we'll pick a risk to talk about as an example. Um, say the risk of falling from heights, okay, that's a simple one. Um, just say you've got a building with a roof and something on the roof, like maybe an air conditioning unit, needs regular maintenance. So the risk there is um, that someone, or the hazard, is that someone falls off the roof. Okay, now in the situation that we're talking about with someone falling off a roof, um, the best thing that you can do according to the hierarchy of control is eliminate the risk entirely. So that means getting rid of the air conditioning unit entirely, saying, do you actually need it? No, use windows. And then what that means is that there's no air conditioning unit, there's no need for someone to get up and maintain it. So there's no risk that they'll get up there to maintain the air conditioning unit and fall off the roof. Okay. So that's elimination, that's the best strategy. But you might be in a scenario where you can't, um, you can't do without an air conditioning unit. You might um, actually have a facility that has to be air conditioned because it's got lots of um, control systems or computer equipment in it. So um, the hierarchy then recommends the next best thing you can do as substitution. So that might be looking at other uh, temperature control systems that um, eliminate the need for the air conditioning unit to be on the roof. So it might be substituting a roof a roof based system with a unit that sits on the ground. Um, there are lots of, you know, I'm not an air conditioning specialist so I'm not trying to necessarily solve that problem. The idea is to go through all of the different ways that you could substitute a conventional unit with alternate technologies. So the next step is uh, implementing engineering controls. So in this example, if you can't get rid of the air conditioning entirely, if you can't move the external unit onto the ground or somewhere else, you can't substitute it with an alternate technology, your next step is to make the installation as safe as possible where it is. They're not 
they're not able to get from the unit to the edge. So they might fall over, they might fall over on the roof, but they're not going to fall off the edge of the roof because you've designed something, you've put in an engineering control that prevents that from happening. That, that solution is lower down on the, on the triangle because it's less desirable than eliminating the hazard altogether. The next solution is to implement a, um, an administrative control. But the issue with administrative controls is that they rely on procedures and they rely on people following those procedures and not just following it one time but following it every time they do that activity. So in this case an administrative procedure might be filling in a work at heights safety form. The reason why this is lower down on the triangle is because it's not a perfect solution. It's more likely to fail because it involves people and people are inherently more fallible than the absence of a risk entirely. And the last solution is PPE. So you're just saying, you know, you're just telling people, look, it's on the roof, it's a risk. We can't remove the risk, we can't control the risk, we can't substitute it, uh, we can't put in a process. You just have to wear your safety equipment and hope that that saves you. Even if they wear their safety equipment, there's always a risk that the safety equipment fails, okay? Things do fail. But then you might go, oh, well, we'll just implement another system that requires people to check their safety equipment before they do work. But again, there's always a risk that someone won't check their safety equipment. There's always a risk if you say it needs to be done every six months, that the company has a change of staff and the new person doesn't do it for whatever reason. And suddenly people are relying on something that's been checked and it hasn't actually been checked. If you've worked for a company for a while, you will have seen um, people that have been involved in workplace accidents. They often come out and give talks. And there are people doing circuits who have um, been working as arborists, so doing maintenance on tall trees or helping cut down tall trees. And their carabiners have just opened through repeated um, motion of you know the work that they're doing. It slowly unscrewed itself, and then all it takes is for someone to hit it at the wrong angle, and things that were um, being held by the carabiner are suddenly loose. Um, so yeah, people have fallen out of trees that way. So you know, um, safety equipment is not um, infallible either. Take home message is that elimination is always the best strategy. So. That's all I've got to say about the hierarchy of risk control. I am sure that you will hear it mentioned. Um, thanks for watching this video. Like it if you found it useful. Comment if you've got anything else to add. Um, yeah, so comment. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more. Um, there'll be more episodes in the Leaders Love Triangle series. Um, yeah, and hit the bell so that you hear when new episodes come out. Thanks for watching Leader Logic.